Hey everybody, welcome to Watches with Dennis, and I wanted to do a quick episode today because I had a viewer, a Canadian viewer, write in and ask if I would be willing to talk about the watches that uh, Canada's uh, political leaders, their party leaders in 2021 have been wearing. And they sent me a link to a piece from the Toronto Sun, which sort of talked a bit about three of these leaders and what watches they favor. So, uh, I've taken a look and I'll, I'll throw some images up and I'll just give some quick thoughts. I've never owned any of these particular watches, so uh, <laughs> obviously it'll be quite speculative, but it might uh, catch some attention. It might get some people thinking about some watches they want to consider getting. So first, I want to go ahead and start with the Conservative Party leader. His name is Aaron O'Toole, and it was noted that he has been wearing an Apple watch. Now, as I said before, I've, I've never owned any of these watches. I've never owned an Apple Watch. I know plenty of non-watch people who love the Apple Watch. My understanding is the Apple Watch is the best-selling watch in the world right now. I know watch people who are into the Apple Watch. They like its functionality. And I know other people who are watch collectors who despise Apple Watch and think it's a terrible, problematic uh parasite that's feeding upon the the hobby of watch collecting. I would say my general view is that I'm not interested because I view it more as a computer than a than a watch. It does satisfy all the functional the functional needs of a watch. Uh but given I look at my phone so much already, I'm not interested in an Apple Watch. I don't feel I need another screen in my life occupying my time. However, I do respect what the Apple Watch can do. Uh, in terms of its capabilities, and that's going to really suit a lot of people's lifestyles. And also, I think that the Apple Watch is an excellent gateway for people. There are going to be a lot of individuals, especially younger individuals, that are going to be drawn to wearing an Apple Watch for the capabilities that it has. And those individuals might be more interested in higher horological, uh, you know, significant watches uh, later in their lives. And getting used to wearing a watch, I think, is the biggest hurdle to getting people into watches. So, in that regard, I'm actually really glad that the Apple Watch exists. Now, I will go ahead and set as a, you know, I was a political science major as an undergrad, so I will, I will denote that I don't know whether or not Mr. O'Toole actually loves the Apple Watch, uh, doesn't really care at all about watches, or if he's trying to do a political statement with it. In the U.S., it's very common for politicians to take affectations that seem more of the people. And so, uh, it would not be unusual for a politician, even if they are of means, even if they are into watches, to choose something that's really common, relatively low cost, to just sort of say, hey, I'm one of you. Uh, so I don't know if he's into Apple Watch for the watch or if he's into Apple Watch because of what it says to the public. A, a good case in point would be uh, in the United States after uh, President Biden was elected and he had his inauguration, there was an article, I don't remember which, it might have been the New York Times, there was a piece that criticized him wearing a Rolex Datejust, which in the realm of luxury watches, if we're talking retail prices, is pretty affordable but still was seen as a little snobbish, uh, or at least that was the spin of the article. So there's a good political reason to perhaps go a different route. Uh, speaking of Rolex, the second uh, political leader I want to talk about, his name is Jagmeet Singh, and he is the leader of the New Democratic Party. And they, in the article, they talk about a couple watches he has, but apparently the one he wears the most often is the Rolex Submariner. Now, the Rolex Submariner generally doesn't need an introduction to anyone, even if you're not into watches. If you've seen a Sean Connery James Bond film, you have seen a Submariner. Uh, it is iconic. I would argue that with per, you know, watch people perhaps leaning more towards the Rolex Daytona, but amongst the general population, the Rolex Submariner is probably the sports model Rolex watch that people think of, at least in the, in the tool watch realm to be more specific, because you could classify even date just as, as sports watches from Rolex. Um, I, when I first got my very first luxury watch, I got a Rolex, actually. It was a Rolex Explorer 2. And when I went in looking, it was a Submariner that I had in mind. Uh, I bought my watch used and unsurprisingly, even back then, and this was like 13 years ago, there weren't any Submariners available. Uh, it used to be a lot more uh, easily obtainable watch, uh, than it is today. Now, retail, the Submariners, I mean, it depends if you go date or no date, but we're talking a watch that starts a little over $8,000 retail. If we go onto the used market, you're, I think, looking closer to the $14,000 US range. So, I mean, compared to an Apple Watch, it is significantly more expensive. However, at least if we're sticking retail, you're talking a watch that's under five figures. So in the realm of luxury, this isn't really as high end as people think. 
It's just Rolex is Rolex. It's the name brand that resonates with everyone, be you a watch aficionado or not. And actually, for that reason, if you're looking at getting a, a watch, a luxury watch, Rolex is not a bad place to start if you avoid the up the uptick in price you have to pay secondhand currently. It's gotten ridiculous with Rolex. Uh, Rolex makes a really robust watch. Uh, I think that there are a lot of really fine qualities about Rolex. I will deviate from where I feel some of my fellow YouTubers go, where Rolex is useful for a couple of reasons in the YouTube space. One is you can get a lot of clicks when you put Rolex in the title of your of your episode. So for monetary reasons, there can be a desire for people to cover Rolex, perhaps more than it deserves. And then I also know a lot of YouTubers that might talk a high hor- horological game. Then they show you their watch box and everything they seem to own is a Rolex. It's a little sus in my, in my opinion. Like, are you really a Patek fan and an AP fan of your, and these are people who are dropping significant dollars to buy a whole bunch of different Rolexes. So it's not that they couldn't actually go up market more if they wanted to, but everyone has their own preference. Uh, I think, you know, Rolex is a, is an oft gifted watch. If you're not a watch person and you want to say you've made it, Rolex is the way to go. I mean, there's a reason why I chose it first before I was into watches. My first two luxury watches were Rolex watches because I knew the name brand and that carries a lot of weight. So in the case of, uh, Mr. Singh, I don't know whether he's a watch guy or not because he owns a couple of Rolexes. Um, I think his other watch was a date just. So he might just know that Rolex is a, is a, is a status symbol and owns them for that reason. Uh, or it, he might be a watch guy and just Rolex was his gateway company. Cause again, it gets weird because Rolex appeals to a lot of non watch people, but there are watch people who are really into Rolex too. So you can't always judge when someone owns a Rolex what they exactly think about watches and watch collecting and horo- and horology in general. So finally, we'll end with the most famous, at least in the United States, of these uh, of these three leaders, and that would be the Liberal Party leader, Justin Trudeau. Now, according to the Toronto Sun, his piece that he likes to wear is an IWC regulator, so a Portuguese regulator. So IWC are historically known more fully spelled out as International Watch Company. That is a watch collector's brand. Uh, I mean, IWC is a well-established company. It's not like some micro brand that doesn't put out a lot of watches. But uh, in this case, you know, generally, if you're going I- IWC, you're probably into watches already. So I would say Mr. Trudeau is se- sending a signal with his wearing of an IWC regulator that he's into watches. That said, if he's if it was a gift and it's the only watch he typically wears... Uh, it, it might mean nothing. It might just be someone who was into watches, gave him something and decided to go off the beaten path and not go down the Rolex rabbit hole that so many people do when it comes to giving a luxury watch as a gift. Um, now, my understanding, again, per that article, is the model, it's a platinum model that Mr. Trudeau has. Uh, it was built in very limited numbers, so it's a very, very expensive watch, which is is fair enough. That said, if you are interested in an IWC Portuguese regulator, they generally can be found, I looked at Chrono24 this morning, U.S. price points between 10000 to 20000 closer to the $10,000 mark. Again, it depends what metal, like are you going precious metal, depends is it what year it was and all of that. Now, regulators are really interesting watches, and I've actually never owned a regulator. I've looked at several lower end than IWC, but so regulators like to have a uh, different spot of the dial for the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. So they it comes up with a really cool look. And I, I have one up on the screen so you can see what an IWC Portuguese regulator looks like if you've never seen one up close, just because it's a really interesting style of watch. So from a, a horology standpoint, I think this is the most interesting of the three. It also uh, sounds like it's the most expensive of the three. But uh, looking at all of these, ultimately, I think even this, this rare model was listed as sub $30,000. So compared to what we see out of like the Holy Trinity, Audemars Piguet, uh, Vacheron Constantin, or, uh, or Patek Philippe, these are all approachable watches, comparatively speaking. They're, they're high dollar for most of us, but I mean, in terms of the realm of expensive watches, this is still on the low end. This is on the south side of $100,000 by a lot. So, and if you want to get similar looking watches, there are variations on all. Well, obviously with an Apple watch, if you want a different smartwatch, you can do Apple watch is pretty affordable, but there are other dive watches that look like Rolex Submariner. There are other regulators that are made by uh, companies that are much more affordable than IWC. And IWC is not really that bad either. So if these concepts are of interest to you, there's a lot of, of 
area you can play in, especially when it comes to a dive watch. But so anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on these uh, three political leaders in Canada and what watches they have chosen. Uh, comment below if you have any thoughts about their watch choices or if there are uh, other watches you know that they have that are of interest and be it'd be fun to read about. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified about future videos. And I'll talk to everyone the next time I do one. Take care.